So just to answer the question, uh, all the uh, tutorial material uh, is available online and gonna stay available online. So if you go to this website, so you just need to put this. Uh, so that was kind of the link we sent by email already. Uh, but if you put like the extension this after the summer school website, then you're gonna uh, end up in, uh, I would say, in, on this page. And then you can just scroll uh, from each different tutorial. And for instance, uh, for tutorial where the content or adjust by presentation or, or like in PDF, you're gonna get the link directly here. The idea is very for all different tutorial, we kept like all the structure of question, objective and key points uh, to make you clear and harmonize uh, between tutorials. Um, so let's go to tutorial two. So this tutorial about is about uh, the anatomical and diffusion MRI pipelines. Um, I will say it's also, I will say to get more familiar uh, with the BITS ecosystem of tools. And here actually what I'm gonna use is the connector mapper that is a BITS app. And so somehow I want to make you more familiar with what is a bits app and how to use the connector mapper. So let's go to the presentation slides. So um, I was talking about what is a bits app. So bits up is just a container image that is capturing a neuroimaging pipeline. And this pipeline is taking a bits formatted data set as inputs. And such that uh, in such a design, uh, the bits app doesn't depend on any software outside the image. So what you will need is uh, the container engine installed. For instance, there is Docker, or there is singularity for people that doesn't have admin uh, privileges and a very nice conversion from one engine to the other one. So that's very the idea is, uh, so it makes them very portable. Uh, by having a container image, so you've got kind of a similar, uh, uh, like a, a unique file, you can also give a specific version. So each time, uh, there are like new changes and a new version is tagged, then those images are uh, stored and kept. To, uh, so you can always get back to an old version that you were using to do analysis to still keep the same version to, for instance, you got a paper to be revised and you have to rerun the study uh, three months later, you can still get back to exactly the same version you were running uh, the bits up at this point. Uh, and, and each bits up uh, should follow the same core set of command lines. So uh, the core set of command line is very like to give as input the bits root directory, the output directory of the bits up itself, the level of analysis, and then uh, for instance, the label of the different subject or participant to be processed in the, in the data set. For if you don't put any labels, it's just gonna process the entire data set. Uh, and then what is actually all those tags uh, before? Because I just went directly to the core set, but what are all those things? So all those things are more related to the container image itself. So what is saying uh, the TI and some are just saying that we're gonna get in an interactive board, uh, then we're kind of removing some extra uh, data. And then this is very important is uh, this dash V because in somehow everything that is inside a container it just in the container, but you cannot see it outside. And everything that is on your computer, on your computer, you won't uh, be able to access it uh, from within the container. So what you need is, as you did for the virtual machine, is you have to mount your local folder into a folder location inside the container to be able to access it. And so that's the goal of those two lines is to tell. Uh, 
the container that actually this bit data set directory actually just gonna be your local uh, so your data set that is locally that is locally stored into this folder and so you're gonna access your local folder directly into as a bit data set name so that's why it's appearing here you see everything that is after the call of an image is all related to the inside of the container and everything that is before is all uh, kind of making a link between what is locally on your computer and what is inside the container. And in the middle, there is the container image that you are calling. So here is just one of the example uh, bits that they were published during the paper. Uh, and so what you're saying is in these bits, uh, Docker account that is available online, uh, get me example, the image that is called example, and then you've got the specific version of the image you want to get. So in some way, it makes them very easy to be run and integrated into automated pipe, uh, pipeline platforms. Uh, it's also uh, give you the ability to exactly replicate an analysis workflow uh, and also to uh, enable others to replicate your analysis by reporting, for instance, the bits up name and version in your manuscript. So here I'm just putting a bit more information. Uh, so different resources to, uh, to get a bit more information about bits up. So there is, a, I would say, official website. The paper that has been published uh, alongside uh, the, this, uh, this, uh, this project. And then uh, at the time of uh, Bits Up came out, uh, so Chris Gorgoleski, that was the, the main author of the Bits Up paper, actually gave a workshop uh, during the NeuroHack week. And so the video of the workshop uh, has been recorded and is available on YouTube. Um, so that's more or less uh, my introduction on the Bits Up. And so now what is Connect on Mapper? You already heard about Connect on Mapper a few times. So first in our, our primary uh, registration uh, form, and then uh, during the, the, the first lecture. So Connect on Mapper uh, is an open source Python free uh, pipeline software. Um, so it's uh, open source license. It's hosted on GitHub. Um, it, it's was developed for use within our project, but also for open source software distribution. And Connect on Mapper 3 provides, so it provides a bits up that implements uh, all different pipelines. Uh, I would uh, involve uh, to compute uh, connection matrices, uh, uh, structural connection matrices, but also functional matrices from uh, deriving from T1, uh, diffusion, and fMRI data. And so all of this using the Lausanne uh, post solution scale that is giving you five different uh, resolution, microscopic resolution of your connector. And so here, what you see is, uh, so you've got the three different pipelines and then each pipeline uh, provides you an interface uh, with different tools uh, that has been already well adopted in the, in the community. And so everything is empowered by NiPipe. So all the pipe processing pipeline uh, is just a NiPipe workflow as fMRI prep. If you already heard about fMRI prep, so that's kind of the same design principle here. That, like give us like a very nice framework to track the execution of the pipeline and to resume at some step if you uh, rerun it and things haven't changed you're gonna resume at the at the step of processing where a parameter change for instance and so those three pipelines that kind of uh, so uh, link with each other. So the diffusion pipeline gonna take uh, output of the anatomical pipeline, the same for the functional pipeline. Meaning that the diffusion pipeline need the parcellation of the brain to be able to map the structural connectome or the functional connectome. Uh, 
And so for all the different stage of the pipeline, then you're gonna, uh, the, the first is the segmentation stage that's gonna uh, provide you uh, the Reconol uh, pipeline from FreeSurfer. Uh, and then if you want to use different uh, method for brain extraction, if the method in FreeSurfer is not working, then we also uh, gave uh, some, uh, option to run, for instance, BET, FSL BET, or to run the ENS, uh, ENS brand extraction with a template that actually is very robust. And so the idea is gonna start to run free software, run this uh, custom brand extraction, and then plug it back into the Reconnol pipeline and execute the rest. Uh, then in the parcellation, uh, you're gonna get the Lausanne, uh, so the previous way we were computing the Lausanne uh, parcellation, the 2008, and a new way that actually I've been reviewed and is much more efficient and, and uh, symmetry is guaranteed in the parcellation between industry. So I will really recommend you to use Lausanne 2018 now. And in this Lausanne 2018, we are including new structures. So it's not by default, you can still not include them, but if you want, you can include the hippocampal subfields and the brainstem structure as segmented by free surfer now, and the thalamic nuclei with a kind of in-house tool method. Now about pre-processing, it's gonna be really related to what Marco was presenting. So you get some option for denoising, for bias field correction, for motion correction, distortion correction, uh, to estimate different partial volume maps, uh, to help tractography, to refine the fibers, or to get, uh, as uh, I would say, uh, uh, far enough to reach the cortical surface. Uh, then you've got the registration stage that give you like the FSL FERP, linear registration, but also a nonlinear uh, registration by ENS and more a surface based uh, registration that is doing this by uh, BB register from free surfer. Now on the reconstru reconstruction side, you have a different, uh, I would say diffusion signal reconstruction algorithms. So depending on the type of data, you might be able to use one of those or a few of those. So you can have the tensor, you have the uh, constraint spherical deconvolution, the spherical harmonics, uh, um, uh, the shore itself, and then the propagator with the map MRI. So all this thing can extract you uh, also other metrics, like the map MRI can give you also more microstructural information measures. And then the tractography. So here you can use uh, choose between deterministic and probabilistic, uh, between uh, DiPi and MRTrix also. So that's kind of the big feature here in Connector Mapper is we kind of link the two. So you can do the reconstruction with one and do the tractography with the other one and vice versa. Uh, and so what you're gonna find is this anatomically constrained uh, tracking in MRTrix and the kind of similar method in DIPI gonna be the particle filter in Turkey. And then you can see it at inside the white metal mass, but you can also see it at the interface between the gray matter and white matter to not have this kind of bias of um, number of fibers due to the kind of uh, size of the bundles. Uh, the, the still in uh, like sitting and the interface might also have some limitation such that then the path is very long. And so you have much less probability to reach the other hemisphere. So you might lose a lot of uh, inter-hemispheric connection. And the final stage is to kind of put the, the, the population of fibers with the parcellation and to compute and to map the structural connector. On the side of the fMRI, it's gonna be about the spiking, about uh, correction of the slice timing, the correction of motion and distortion. For registration, uh, you have FLIRT or the surface-based BB register. And then you have different um, pre-processing methods uh, after registration, uh, such as the nuisance correction or the band pass filtering. And then the last step, is, is about uh, computing the royal time series and also uh, Persian correlation uh, connectivity matrices.
And, um, and the good news is, is not only a Docker image that are having a kind of simple, but also complex way of being called from the terminal, but it also comes with a graphical user interface that I call the CMP Bits App Manager. And this uh, graphical user interface was very designed to facilitate all steps involved in the configuration and execution of Connected Mapper. So as you can see, you select your bits data set first, then you can uh, create an edit, uh, edit different configuration file for each of the pipeline. Then you can configure uh, how your bits app should be run, uh, which participants it should be run. Then you can execute it. And when it's done, then um, you have the quality inspector window. That's what you're gonna do, it's gonna help you in opening uh, directly the output of connector mapper with kind of appro appropriate uh, visualization tool. So it's not a visualization tool that is developed inside connector mapper, but for instance, you're gonna use uh, FSL view uh, for some fMRI data or for some, uh, um, I would say registration, overlay of registration for quality control. Uh, we're gonna use free view, uh, that is the visualization from free software for the parcellation. Uh, then um, MR view, so the visualization of MR tricks gonna be used for the orientation distribution function uh, visualization and track view is gonna be used for the tractogram visualization. So uh, it's kind of my end of my short introduction on connector mapper but you have a lot of documentation. So I put all those resources. So I mean, it's all going back to, I will say the documentation of Connecton Mapper, uh, but here you're gonna get really like a pop-up page that's gonna show you how to use uh, the graphical user interface. So uh, this tutorial today might be a bit of, um, I would say of, uh, uh, um, a repetition of, of what is uh, uh, provided into the documentation page uh, online. But I think it's also nice to make it more uh, interactive and show you. Uh, and so, yeah, you really can, um, there is page to show you how to use it graphically or common, uh, with the command line interface. So. <coughs> So now I'm moving to more like the practical uh, parts of the tutorial. So as same as before, I'm gonna use uh, this uh, sample uh, webcom data set that is coming to the virtual machine. And so if you want to follow along, uh, make sure the virtual machine is running. So um, all my uh, like, Different little exercise is about uh, the different, uh, I would say, tasks that you need, uh, you know, when analyzing a data set with connector mappers. So one, the first one is how you configure the different pipelines. So first, what I'm gonna do is, uh, so I'm just gonna exit the old one and start from a clean terminal. So to start the uh, BitZap manager, you just need to uh, call it from the terminal. Here we go. And then the first step into the, the CMP BitZap manager is to load your Bits dataset. So here, what I'm gonna do, and that's here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just arranging a little bit such that. Okay. Looks quite good. Okay, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the data set. So this sample um, webcom data sets. 
the type tag has been put. So don't worry if it takes a bit of time uh, at this point, it just PyBits itself is uh, representing the data sets uh, in this uh, database uh, to then uh, carry very easily all the files. But then you see it's like you can get, for instance, this line that I printed uh, in the last tutorial, you can also see that actually you're also using PyBits to get the data inside the connector map. Uh, so then when uh, we have loaded the data sets, you have kind of uh, three different uh, option in the, in the connector mapper uh, uh, manager. Uh, one is the configuration of the pipeline. Second is the configuration and execution of the bits up. And third is how to visualize the output. So here the goal is to configure the pipelines. And so here, what you see is just for each single pipeline, uh, whenever you find the modality. So here, what you can see is the anatomical and diffusion pipeline. We have staged to be configured. If you go to fMRI, there is no fMRI, it, nothing appears because there is just no fMRI packet. So it's gonna also reduce uh, risk of error introduced by manual, uh, I would say, uh, intervention. And then uh, now I'm gonna configure each single stage. Uh, so my idea here was uh, to uh, try to reproduce as close as possible the, um, I would say the processing that we did when we uh, published our VEPCON datasets. Uh, but why I changed, uh, because in the time we were using over the past four years, it was in 2008, now I'm very, uh, encouraging people to use 2018. And so here uh, I updated to use the 2018. So here, what you see in the segmentation stage is when you are like processing different uh, participants, maybe the voxel size itself might vary between acquisition of participants. And so one, but it might also introduce some bias in terms of size of region. If you think about having a voxel size of one millimeter cube or, uh, maybe uh, I know like 0 0.8, it's it gonna not be like comparable uh, in terms of volume, in terms of parcellation, in terms of connectome. So you really have to make sure that all parcellation, uh, the diffusion data is like, you know, like having same resolution. So here I'm just making sure everyone is one millimeter cube isotropic. Uh, and then uh, that's kind of, different option if you want to uh, use uh, a custom brain extraction. So me here, I'm we were just using the uh, uh, free surfer brain extraction by default. For the parcellation, as I was saying, uh, we're gonna use the Lausanne 2018, where you can include the three new structures. Here, what I'm doing is still, I want to reproduce uh, as close as possible, uh, my VEPCON derivatives. So I'm not going to include those new structures. Now for the diffusion pipeline itself, uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to current like quite heavy distortion uh, from the current with um, AD correct. Uh, because it's kind of DTI data. So we don't have so much uh, direction. And we don't have like an opposite phase encoding direction or things that really correct for more sophisticated uh, distortion as you might have heard about top up or. Uh, and then we have a motion. So here what I'm doing is edit correct and motion correction with my first. And what I'm doing here I'm gonna resample my diffusion data to fit the resolution of uh, the anatomical uh, uh, image. The meaning of that is uh, if um, by increasing the resolution of the diffusion, uh, we're gonna uh, make sure that actually we are not um, limited uh, in terms of fibers uh, connecting region, like I mean, uh, if we have fibers that are reconstructed in two minim um, in two millimeter uh, cube, um, 
then you might not have the same um, resolution for the, the trajectory of the fibers. And so in the end, you're gonna lose some, some resolution, you know, like for just the trajectory of the fibers. So uh, there are like two uh, kind of uh, way is one is to resample for, uh, to the anatomical resolution. The other one is to diffusion. But it's always better to refine to the final resolution than to the more gross. So that's very the idea of why I'm resampling to one by one by one. Now for the registration itself, because I still haven't done, uh, and might not be still very happy of some distortion correction, then what I'm doing here is still I'm running a nonlinear deformation with ends to account with, with uh, some uh, nonlinear deformation, some distortion might, might still be present in the diffusion. If you are very happy with all the distortion correction, you can use easily FSL and you're gonna use the FERC that is just a rigid registration. Now here, it's what I was saying. You can have like different options for reconstruction and tracking, and you can choose between using DiPi or MR tricks. So as I was, uh, using a matrix in the paper, I'm gonna use a matrix here. And so as a DTI uh, data, uh, as Marco was showing, the tensor model actually is not able to uh, distangle uh, crossing fibers. And, but uh, a constraint spherical depth convolution like a spherical harmonics model can. Uh, there is a certain rule of how many, uh, I will say, what is the maximal order of basis uh, you can exp like model your diffusion signal based on the number of direction of acquisition. And because the acquisition is DTI and is having only 30 direction, we, uh, we can use uh, another up to order four. So that's very why we're using four and not more than four. The higher it is, uh, I would say the more, uh, the more uh, you're gonna be able to disentangle like more direction for the crossing fibers, but it might also come uh, at the cost of noise. And so for quite a very, uh, like a very high angular, so like kind of new diffusion acquisition scheme, uh, it has been shown that uh, having an order higher than eight uh, doesn't uh, give you anything. So then if you have like having a very nice uh, multi-shell acquisition, for instance, order eight is, is enough. Uh, and then on the tracking parts, then it's about, okay, now that we have the orientation of, uh, I would say the diffusion of particles in each of the voxels, now how I'm gonna uh, reconstruct kind of the path of the diffusion. So how I can reconstruct all the fibers that are uh, kind of uh, in the end uh, making this uh, tractogram. And so here you also have, uh, uh, so you have uh, the deterministic or probabilistic uh, method of a matrix. And then here you can specify different parameter. Uh, the idea is there are like kind of two school of software. One is kind of to try like fMRI prep that kind of try to, uh, I would say, give you the default parameter and then that's it. And here actually the connectome mapper is not about giving you like the default pipeline to be run on your data, but giving you like, I will say all the methods so there are some methods that might be more uh, tuned to your own data than others. And so here, uh, depending on what you want to achieve, maybe your deterministic or probabilistic method might work better for you. Uh, and then even the angle, how to filter out some fibers. Because for instance, the angle, if a fiber is going more than 45 degrees, it's gonna be eliminate, eliminated from the tractor run when they are reconstructing. So that's kind of the, the idea. The step size, it's maybe also related um, 
um, I would say to to your resolution and part of the brain where they are like a very uh, big uh, turn or if things are straight because the I would say the smaller is the step size the more you're gonna take the curves uh, but you might also take wrong uh, wrong paths and um, and it's gonna also take much more time to reconstruct each each fiber as each step is smaller. And, um, and the cutoff value is kind of, okay, in the next, uh, I will say in the next voxel, you want to reconstruct the fiber. Uh, if my uh, FA value is lower than this, then we don't consider anymore the fiber. Or we stop the fiber. And then, uh, so there is uh, this, uh, anatomically constrained tractography. What is using actually just the partial volume maps of different brain tissue. So it's using the gray matter, uh, partial volume maps, the white matter and the CSF. And the idea is really to make sure that the, the fiber uh, for the best reach the, um, the cortical surface. And then you can have different options such as seeding from the gray matter, white matter interface. Here, I'm not seeding from the gray matter, white matter interface because this type of method, uh, what I saw is also introducing, like I was getting much less inter hemispheric connection because of this method, because of the length of the pass and the type of method that is actually behind the tractography algorithm. Uh, so, but then it's very up to the application. Me, I was just not using that, but then uh, we can use the fiber density uh, metric as a connector, as structural connect, uh, connectivity matrices, uh, such that it is not biased by the size of the region. Um, and at the end, you can still have some streamlined filtering to reduce the number of false positive uh, of, uh, and false negative. So here, uh, we are providing SIFT that is really like eliminating or not. The SIFT 2 of the matrix is more giving you a weight, but then it was not allowing us to uh, integrate it in computing other measures such as the average FA longer bundle and such things. So that's, uh, that's all. And so here I have everything set up. So you're gonna see in my slide uh, and in the page, I, I show you like all the different steps, slide by slide. Uh, so the last step, when you are like happy with all your settings, you just to click on this save all pipelines. And so here, what you see is like, it, it just the interface save the different configuration file uh, with the default name in the code folder of the bits data set. So bits data sets, uh, it is kind of a, a plan to have a code folder where you can have all different files that can generate some derivative of your data set or explain some manipulation of the data set. So that's why actually I'm using this code uh, folder to put my configuration files there. And so here now my uh, configuration file is saved and all good. Now that I have my configuration file, I have two options. Either I can quit the graphical interface and run the command line, uh, like the bits app from the command line directly. So calling docker run, or I can just go to the uh, proper window in the, in, the, in the graphical interface. So that's what I'm gonna do uh, in this uh, tutorial. And so here now we are going to exercise two, that is how uh, to use the graphical interface to run the bits. So first you have to click on the button to open the bits up window. So it's the same, it might still take a bit of time because it's still uh, loading uh, uh, the data set into this uh, pi bits uh, representation. And also uh, sometimes checking some uh, different uh, inputs. For instance, if you don't have fMRI, it won't show you a link uh, for, the for the configuration file for the fMRI pipeline, for instance. 
So there is a bit of intelli intelligence happening at this point. Um, so now that we are in the bits up window, what you see is here, uh, that's the output directory. So as I was mentioning before, uh, for the um, uh, for this um, summer school, uh, we're gonna use the derivative folder inside the directory uh, to generate all uh, process data. So all uh, output of connector map are gonna be put there. Uh, then, so here we managed to get, okay, we have just one subject. If you will have thousand subjects, you can just uh, control A and select all or with the shift, just make a sub selection. Then you can have like different option about parallel processing. If you are more than one participant, then you can run things in parallel uh, and then control a bit more uh, how the parallelization in the execution for each subject. So in some hours, you can have uh, like a multiplication of the two cannot be higher than uh, the amount of CPU that are available on your machine. And then uh, something that can be important is about uh, random number generator uh, seeds. And the thing is, there are many parts, for instance, in a probabilistic tractography that are based on random number generation. And from one execution to another one, if the seed is not fixed, then the output just can change. And so this can be solved by fixing uh, the seed directly at the beginning. And so it's why you can really see uh, those type of two options that are one that is uh, used by the registration and one that is used more by MRTRIX for the, for the tractography. Here, I'm just gonna use the settings by default. And now here, what I'm giving is the the pass to the configuration file uh, to configure the anatomical pipeline and then the, the diffusion pipeline. Anatomical pipeline is always, always run. Then you can, for the diffusion or the fMRI pipeline, you can really decide if you want to run it or not run it. And as you see, it's very all the configuration, it's the configuration file that I generated. Uh, uh, previously. And finally, the uh, very important is you have to provide uh, your free surfer license inside Connector Mapper. Uh, and so here, as I was instructing you, uh, so my license file is in the free surfer directory in the software. And the last option is like a feature, the still a bit experimental, the DIT is Datalad is kind of a system like Git uh, for code. The Datalad is designed for neuroimaging data. It's like it's very tailored for neuroimaging data. It's a Git for neuroimaging data. And here the idea is you can really use Datalad to track the change in your data set. So you can put like a state before processing, after processing. You can even track like for instance, the uh, container that is transforming the data, and then you can even rerun the whole analysis. So it's very powerful. Uh, but here I'm not gonna use that a lot. And so when you are happy with all the settings, there is still one step that is about checking the settings to make sure that everything is kind of, uh, to you know, detect if there is like a pot potential, some potential error that can happen. Uh, like if you don't specific, like select a subject, or I don't know, if you don't declare the anatomical pipeline or a configuration file or some other. So that's the goal of the rich setting. If uh, there is something that is not happy, here you're gonna see like a line, a red line that's gonna tell you what is not happy, what is zero. Like here, it's just giving you a warning, uh, be careful fMRI pipeline is not existing, but we are all good because we don't have fMRI data. So it's why you are going, it's an about and you can run the bits up. Very, uh, like very often what happened to me, I just I'm forgetting to uh, select the subjects. Um, and when you are like, 
the check pass, then you are able to run the bit sub. So here I'm going to run it, but I'm not going to uh, go through all the process. But as you see here, what it's going to do, it's going to generate for you the Docker run command of the bit sub. So it's going to, oh, I have to go a bit here. So it's going to generate you like the proper uh, mapping of the folders to this bits dear folder, for instance, inside you're going to uh, do the proper mapping of your license text that is still available inside the container. Uh, then you're going to, you see, it's going to call the image and then very specific to a bit sub, you see the bits directory, the output directory, the level of analysis, and the label to be processed. And then you have more specific option, more specific to connect on mapper that are different configuration file for the, uh, uh, for the pipelines, but also the, like, the free surface license. Right? And the number of thread to use uh, in parallel and so on. So here, uh, and what I can show you is so in the execution in the terminal, we see that, you know, it's like those commands have been run, but then you don't see anything happening. So for each subject, there is a log file that is uh, created and kind of updated during the processing. And so this, you can find it. So if you go to derivatives, CMP, you can see, you can find the log uh, directly in the subject directory. And if you open it, so what I'm doing is I'm using this uh, uh, GL or GG. Uh, so I open it inside here. And what you can see actually is very old, the log of execution of the pipeline. And this GLOGG is kind of, you can still auto refresh. So as long as the file has been written, you can really see kind of you know, the update. So what I see here is actually managed to get back to the uh, registration stage. So I might have changed uh, one parameter uh, in my uh, registration. And so now it's really starting from the registration. So uh, for sake of time, I won't go to the end of the processing, but uh, the good news is normally I, uh, I should have run it once and we already have derivatives. So here I already did a control C to, to stop the Docker image execution. So it's also something you can do. You're like, oh no, I, I did a misconfiguration. So what you can do is just control C here you change your stuff and then you just go here and you run again. And by running again, you're just gonna resume again and get back and, and, and here we go. So I'm gonna kill it again, sorry. And and we are now in the, the last part that is uh, how to check the different outputs of Connecton Mapper. So this is very important step because they're like all the pipelines can be very, very complex and they are like source of error at each single step. So you have to be very careful. I'm not taking directly a connectivity matrices output it and then taking them blindly to, to, the, to the rest of the analysis. Uh, so I'm gonna close the BitSAP window I'm gonna get back to my main window. And for that, I'm gonna open the quality inspector window. I, I will say there are like four different steps uh, uh, to really be sure. So again, it's taking a bit of time here. It's five bits plus the virtual machine uh, uh, to get uh, a list of the different outputs. Oh, here we go. Uh, zoop. So don't worry. Those outputs you're gonna get an error on your side is because I'm trying to use a free software, uh, but that is not installed in the virtual machine. 
But when you install properly a free surfer on your, uh, I will say, uh, on your computer, then you're gonna get access to this uh, software. It's called TK Medit. Uh, it's kind of the old uh, free surf free view of free surfer uh, that it kind of becoming more and more obsolete. And so plan also of Connector Mapper is to get rid of uh, uh, using this software and using Freeview instead. So that was kind of the note here. But if you go to parcellation, so the first important thing to check is the output parcellation. So here, what you're gonna see is already, you know, like to kind of get an idea if it really makes sense, uh, all the parcellation itself. And what you see actually is also taking a very uh, custom parse, uh, I would say free surfer color loot. And so you can really see all the different structure appearing in Freeview with proper colors. Uh, second step is the core registration between your anatomical and your diffusion space, because it's very how you're gonna relate and, uh, and connect region, uh, structural region uh, together. Uh, using the fibers. So the endpoint of the fiber should really uh, got into the region of interest. Uh, so here, what you can see is, for instance, this type of output is uh, the first scale of Lausanne 2018 that has been wrapped uh, to the diffusion space. And what you're going to see is just an overlay between the diff diffusion free, so B0 uh, image, and the uh, parcellation that has been. Uh, like wrap. And so here, what I see. So here, what is using is this FSL. So don't worry, FSL gear, we don't need it. So, and so here, it's what you see is how your cortical surface is mapping your, your image. So I'm just not going to go too long because I'm seeing that I'm also reaching the end. So that's the second, the overlay uh, of the registration. So the co-registration between the two space. Second one is really to make sure that the orientation distribution function. So all those, uh, I will say, uh, signal that then are driving the tractography, they are properly oriented. It seems that uh, uh, some gradient uh, axis might be flipped. And then you might see actually orientation that are very wrong in terms of uh, structure of the brain. And so this can be controlled by, by checking the um, spherical harmonics image. So the kind of output of, uh, of the CSD. And this is gonna be launched with MR view. So I'm gonna, in the meantime, update it. So here, what you see, or you don't see well, so yeah, it's a diffusion data is always a bit heavy. So what you see here is those kind of pinots, but they are very, very tiny. So what we want to do is just to customize a little bit the display. Uh, so if you want to, there is the ODF display that is this orientation distribution function display. So, okay. And now what you see here is kind of, you see it's kind of giving you the LMAX order. Then the details is kind of the number of direction of the peanuts you might see like in the visualization. And then you can scale uh, those functions. And actually what I'm gonna do here is just I'm gonna increase, like let's like say, like we can put three. And you see, it's kind of increasing uh, the size of, and so improving a lot the visualization. And so it's very by seeing like, you know, so all the color code here is indicating kind of the main direction of all those, uh, fiber orientation distribution functions. And so the idea is to ready to check it and make sure that it, it looks properly.
And then the last kind of intermediate output uh, to be considered um, My, sorry, my uh, Zoom uh, window doesn't allow me. Okay, so the last thing is the final tractogram. So if you go to the, so in the connectome stage, so the final tractogram is the fiber, the, the fiber that have been used to build the connectivity matrices. All the fibers, they were not uh, ending in each fibers, uh, in each region, actually they are discarded and they won't appear in the final tractogram. So final tractogram meaning it's very all the fibers that are considered in your connectivity matrices. And so here, if you launch it, you're gonna load it with TrackVis. And so here you can really see uh, the tractogram. Uh, in TrackVis, uh, by default, they are just showing uh, fibers that are passing to one plane and the Y plane. But if you go to slice filters and then you disable the Y, then you're really going to see all fibers of your tractogram. And then you can visualize, uh, and then you can uh, finally visualize. So you see, you get uh, for each scale, actually, like matrix uh, with a different uh, metrics. So you can get the FMIN, but also the median, the standard deviation, then different uh, connectivity matrices, fiber density, normalized fiber density, number of fibers. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. So, um, and last one. And then you can uh, have a very basic, uh, I would say, visualization. So very uh, matrix layouts, but you can also uh, use uh, a circular layout uh, as implemented by MME. Okay. And here actually what you can do even is when you double click on one region, normally it should be able to filter out and show you the connection only of this region. But something should not uh, work in the tutorial. Okay, I think here I'm kind of parts. Uh, and then uh, it's five minutes before the end, but this is very, very kind of easy. Is um, last exercise, it just um, how I can run directly the bits out from the command line interface. And so this, I will say, is if you don't have clue, yeah, okay. So, um, so the idea is you can already, you know, just by trying to run it with the connector mapper, then you can already generate this command and then uh, copy it and execute it again. So here, what I'm showing you, it just kind of, uh, you know, like, uh, I would say more nicely uh, layout uh, common to run the connector mapper. So what you see is you got all the kind of dash V that's all uh, to map, to make available local files into your container. Uh, this dash U is something more about user uh, ownership and file permission. Uh, so here it's just saying that you should take your user uh, name and user group, I would say, uh, such that you don't have permission, uh, don't have access to um, change files and so on. The name of my image. So I'm publishing all my Docker image to my profile on Docker Hub. So that's like your Apple store or for Docker images. And then the name of connector mapper bits up, the version, the bits up inputs, and then the anatomical diffusion pipeline and the free software license. And then that's exactly the same uh, command then here, and then it should be exactly the same as here, starting from here. So you're gonna have all of this uh, uh, except zero. Voila.